Hello and welcome. Today is Tuesday, Mar oh, April 14th, not March. Uh, April 14th. Only a month and a half left of school, online school that is. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, LAUSD and eventually also ECR uh, uh, have decided that we will not be returning to school this year, at least this semester. Uh, summer s summer programs are also very questionable and potentially canceled. LUSD already canceled their summer programs, so this will affect both the end of this semester and summer programs. Everything will be online uh, as f as much as we can, um, and things that we can't do are just pretty much canceled. So uh, at this point, so all projects are ca uh, the projects like the roller coaster, of course, was canceled already, but the rocket project is also canceled can't build rockets while we're at home unsupervised <laughs> so so no rocket project uh, maybe perhaps we can figure out a way to do like a video project or something maybe we'll build something and we'll take a video but I have to continuously rethink what I need to do every day because things change almost every day it seems all right, so with that being said, we're going to start our day. Uh, today is finals review day uh, number three. Can you conduct APC lectures over? What do you mean over the summer? APC? What APC? I mean, uh, I don't understand your question, so maybe rephrase it or be more descriptive. Uh, a couple of things to note, uh, you know, we ran into issues apparently yesterday just trying to submit our work. Uh, you should expect to run into problems whenever you do things at the last minute. It's always going to happen. Uh, get ahead. Uh, no, I don't do summer school. Summer is when I relax. <laughs> so you can uh, you can. It's supposed to start reading and doing chapter summaries if you want over summer to get a head start. But I will not be doing lectures over summer. Uh, what about binder check? Uh, that is a good question. Person who loves physics. What about binder check? Well, clearly you're going to use your binder during the AP test, but uh, other than that, <laughs> other than that, no binder check. Uh, I have to figure out if there if there if there could be an alternative assignment that could potentially be the same amount of points. Uh, so that our test category is not overly weighted, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't. I only found out that school is closed f for good yesterday, so I haven't fully hatched a plan yet uh, regarding anything after the AP test. But since we're not returning, that means our final is not in May. It will be uh, during finals week in June. So finals will be during finals week, whenever our block is. It'll be a nice block, blocked exam, uh, and it will not be over the course of four days. It will just be a one day, whenever the finals day for period two or period four, whatever it is. Um, so final is on finals day, and finals will be cumulative across the whole year, not just AP. Will it be c condensed to two hours? Yes. So it's only a uh, finals. So normal, fi uh, pretend like you're in like a normal class, not in an AP class, and you're taking a semester final at the end. Yeah, which means like our the re you know the, normally we do have like an actual like a lab like activity final that we do, which is cool. Unfortunately, we can't do that part, uh, but. We will uh, we'll throw out challenges. So one of the one of the ideas I've had uh, uh, as part of like a 
uh, project or whatever. It would be like a video thing where we do. So I'll give you a challenge, you know, show you what I'm doing, and then, and then somehow you would try to mimic that challenge, post your video, and then we'll have like a, a TikTok or, or I don't know, a video challenge. But those are those are planned for after the AP test, uh, late May, going into June. All right. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is is uh, PDFs. Um, number one, don't send me emails at midnight. Oh my gosh, my phone was just going off over and over because all these darn students uh, running into issues. <laughs> And then telling me, oh my gosh, I can't sir, turn in my work. Help. What do I do? I get notifications on my email, so it keeps on waking me up. I was up till like midnight and I, and I just have a headache today. <laughs> I need to take a nap after I do my videos today. After APC. All right. Uh, it's, making PDFs is very important. Um, this is this is a skill set you need, uh, not just for my class, but moving forward. When you take your upper division writing course in college, you'll you know perhaps you might have to write a um, a paper and you have to publish it or something. Well, if you do, then then you will have to submit your work as a PDF, perhaps. And typically, with long documents, you submit it as PDF. Um, the PDF file is nice and compressed, saves you saves you space, etc. It compresses images, data, uh, your graphs, and whatnot. If you do like a scientific paper, um, so so uh, so, what do you do? How do you make PDFs? Open up Microsoft Word. Here's the easiest way: open up Microsoft Word. Perhaps you took pictures with your phone, then paste your pictures um, on your Microsoft Word. Um, so here, let me find a picture. Oh, this one's a nice one. You might recognize this picture. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to use this picture, so don't tell anyone I'm using it. Bam, there it is. Oh my gosh, it's us. Uh, okay, let's go and paste all of our pictures. So we have a bunch of pictures, nine pages worth of pictures. So here's our document. Um, all you have to do is save it as a PDF. Um, if you try to close it, it might ask you to save. Oh, look, do you want to save this? Yes. Spring break homework. No, more like I forgot to do this over break homework. There we go. Um, and then if you click on docx, you can actually change the type, change it to PDF, and now it's I forgot to do homework over break. I forgot to do this over break homework dot PDF. And, uh, and then just choose where you want to sit, uh, save it. Uh, this, this is your Outlook. Uh, make sure you choose the correct folder normal documents folder kablamo save you're done it's the notes app to directly convert to the pictures into a PDF um, yeah but then you have if you have like uh, 50 bajillion PDF files and you have to combine all the PDF files and then you have to submit 50 files that's no bueno I just want to see one file right you want to always make it easy for your professors not harder uh, if you can combine all your PDF images into one file that would be great so do that um, that also works. Uh, OneDrive ha ha has a document scanner which can uh, export all the documents into one PDF. Ah, yes, also use OneDrive. OneDrive can do the same thing. All right, uh, so what do we learn? Don't send me emails at 12 o'clock at midnight. Uh, learn, you know, save your documents as PDF, upload it. All right, uh, let us begin. Final review number three. Let's we'll start with vectors. Yep. What do we have planned today? Vectors, talk about FBDs, friction, force probes, and then we'll do some AP1 style, uh, AP test style questions after that. So recall vectors of magnitude and direction. Uh, length of vector is the magnitude. GTA of vector is magnitude 
and then you want to give your direction as you know, some sort of angle. Okay, break down vectors into their components. Um, X component. Okay, if this is vector A, this would be A cosine theta and A sine of theta. But don't just memorize things, you know, make sure you understand in, in relation. So if I had a vector like this and gave you this angle here, uh, let's call it something else. This angle is uh, angle psi. So vector B here, uh, the y component of B uh, would be B times cosine uh, negative B times cosine of angle psi. Now if you're using angle psi, you would have to manually insert this negative sign indicating that the y component is going downwards. Uh, that's because we know that the angle is less than 90 degrees and cosine of anything less than 90 degrees will give you a positive number. Um, Bx, the x component, uh, is negative b times sine oops, sine of psi. Um, B cos psi, negative, yeah, good job, negative. So, uh, so in the x component, which is pointing left, uh, the x component, you also have to, again, manually insert the negative sign to uh, because a sign of angle that is less than 90 degrees will also give you a positive value. Right? Now if you, you always use uh, your angle measured from whoa look at that, measured from uh, the positive x-axis going counterclockwise um, then you don't have to manually do negative signs. This will take care of um, so let's say theta is equal to uh, what is this? 270 minus psi. So if you use theta instead, if you use theta instead, then since it's measured going counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, uh, you, you can say that by is equal to b times sine of theta and bx is b cosine of theta. So this a, a, a cosine theta, a sine theta, or b sine theta, b cosine theta, that stuff works as long as your theta is measured going counterclockwise. Theta is cc dub counterclockwise from positive x-axis. Okay, of course. Uh, recall that subtracting vectors is the same as adding a negative vector. Uh, negative a is just a is is the same as a, but flipped backwards. So if a, uh, so here's a here. Uh, so negative a would be going downwards this way, reflected 180 degrees. So take a U-turn. That's what negative sign means. Make a U-turn. U-turn. Uh, now, if the original A had an angle of theta here, then due to vertical angles, you can see how this angle would be theta as well. And this is negative A. Okay, Negative B would be going the other way. So if B was like this originally we take a u-turn 180 degrees going the other way uh, b would be going this way U. okay so if this was psi then this angle here is psi alright so a plus b of course you use tip to tail method um, a is going upwards to the right, like so, at angle theta. And B would be starting from A as if there's another 
set of x y coordinate system where we have the new origin here at the pointy end of a uh, we would draw b b is going downwards this way so that's b and so a plus b gives you this vector here a plus b and it has its own angle Uh, a minus B is the same as, uh, let's use black, A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. So if A is upward, oops, that's not very good. Upwards to the right at angle theta, that's A. Negative B was pointing upwards to the right as well. So starting from here, we're going to go upwards to the right. This is negative B. Then we're going to add negative B to A. And doing tip to tail, we get this thing now. This is A minus B. So we have A is the black one, the green one is now negative B, and we've added negative B to A. All right, so simple stuff, vectors, vector addition. If you have multiple, if you have, uh, of course, if you have two, then you can use shortcuts like law of cosines and other things. Um, but, you know, use vector components uh, when you have more than you know to definitely break everything down into x and y components, add up the x's, add up the y's, and then Pythagorean theorem. So if you have a plus b plus c, uh, here's a, here's b, and let's say c is some other vector that is just straight to the right. Make it easy. This is the new vector c. So a plus b plus c would be this dotted one and it appears that let's use color code um, B is the green one uh, start with A, A being blue so we have AX and you can see AX is positive C is of course positive pointing to the right whereas BX is a negative number bx points to the left. Um, so it's ax plus cx C X minus bx because bx is a negative number. So the x component shrinks a little bit. Um, the y axis. Oh, my a didn't, my ax didn't extend out. So ax should be all the way out here. There we go. Now ay points upwards, where by points downwards. And then CY is zero. So I have a little bit of up versus a lot of bit down. The net result is lots of down. Okay. No. All right, vector stuff, not very difficult. From there, we moved on to drawing FBDs. What? Why isn't my pen writing? There we go. FBD. You should have FBDs drawn. I mean, if you know that it's not rotating, remember how you can you can just do an FBD from from the center of mass. G normal force Fn normal force. This is Fg, which is gravitational force near the surface. Okay. Now if you apply a force, Fa, 
oops, F A applied force. That applied force is also there. Okay, and of course, if there's friction, then friction will slow you down. And going the other way. Okay, now. What you should do now that you know what rotational dynamics is, is draw the FPD where they are applied. Now, if you strategically tie the rope at the center, you can keep the uh, applied force from the center. Okay. Your gravitational force is always from the center of mass. The normal force is from the contact. It's from the from the floor or the uh, wherever this box is on the table. And finally, the friction force is also along the surface so that way. Things to note, the normal force is 90 degrees to the surface. Other things to note, friction force is parallel to the surface. Parallel to the surface. So Fn is 90 degrees, whereas friction is parallel. Now, of course, uh, once we get into rotational dynamics, we can talk about how certain forces can rotate an object. If you're if you're at the center of mass, like you have mg and fa here, then those forces do not apply any torque, so they don't rotate. Um, does the friction force? Mm -hmm. Well, if I had like a circular object or something, then the friction force could provide a torque here. Anyway, no torque here, so don't have to worry about torque. FBD, uh, you can get away with drawing it at the center of mass, but uh, make sure you understand how to draw it properly based on where the forces are applied on the object. Okay, uh, of course there are two types of friction. F F S max is equal to mu s times F n. Okay, this is static maximum static friction. Okay. The now the maximum is based on this value. However, static friction grows, it's a dynamic force. So it grows based on your applied force. So in our model, um, based on what my x component of my applied force is, um, that x component will determine what FF is. So if your x component is less than the maximum force, then the static force will just match whatever it needs to to stay, stay as is. But if you were to pull it slightly harder than the maximum value, it will break, turning into kinetic friction. Oops, I put S again. Uh, mu K now. And how are mu S and mu K related? chat how is mu s and mu k related let's see if we can do a vote uh, man my streamlabs is kind of slow poll new poll uh, mu s versus mu k vote 
uh, for greater than you vote one no vote greater than there we go and then less than vote less than and then let's do equals vote equals done start poll is a poll working a poll has started <laughs> we have one vote yeah this is what the some of you are probably um, on delay or something uh, polls. Oh look, it's a poll. Is the United States better than the United Kingdom? I don't know. <laughs> well, looks like we only have three participants. How come I only have three votes but four people voted? Uh, make sure you put a space between the word vote and what you're voting. So if you if you don't put a space, it doesn't register it. That's probably why. So you have to put a little space, and then you put less than, greater than, or equal to. Whatever. Uh, next time, we'll get it. Greater than. Uh, recall that mu s is a material property. Mu, well, let's just call it mu. Mu is a material property. Um, and and we should have found out that it does not depend on surface area. Having more track, like a wider body, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get more friction. Okay, um, so let's see. It does not depend on F, uh, surface area. Uh, recall that we did some some experiment with a force probe. What does a force probe give you? Force probe. What information does a force probe give? So a force probe was the uh, little box. Uh, and then it has a little rod at the side and a hook that you can attach things to. Uh, and then you connect that to your hub, and then the hub connects to your laptop. Okay. Um, the force probe gives you the applied force as a function of time. Oops. Yeah, so uh, the force probe is designed so that when you pull the thing outwards, it is positive, the little hook. And if you push the hook inwards, you get negative force. So next year, uh, when you get into AVC, you can take off this hook and then crash things into the force probe and measure impact uh, 
and and when you when you are pulling your block so let's have a wooden block when you're pulling a block uh, your force your applied force of course goes upwards do, 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 do. and then kablamo it breaks this is the classic physics experiment this was asked on the AP test like two years ago and three years ago. It was like back to back in one form or another. So it was very important. Uh, this maximum force here, what is this force? Right here. This force is FFS max. FSS, FFS max. All of this is FFS, actually. Right? All of it is, is the static force. Your static force here is matching, is matching your applied force. Remember, you're getting applied force from the force sensor, but because you're pulling it on, uh, pulling a block with it, so that applied force is now measuring the static force that is keeping the block from moving. So we have to remember how the block starts moving after this point here. So not moving, and then moving. But we, we didn't want to accelerate the block when we're moving it. We're moving it at constant velocity. So we strategically made sure to pull it so that once it starts moving, we're not accelerating the block. So that part is also important. Uh, so when you're not moving, your FFS is growing, it gets to its maximum value, then you break it. Once you break it, your object starts to move, but now your applied force is a constant value. So what is the applied force measuring if it's a constant value? if you know that you're not accelerating. So that, that is the most important part, the fact that you're not accelerating. Well, if we take a look at our FBD while we're moving. So let's draw an FBD. On the block, we have MG down, FN up. Our applied force is pulling us to the right. And so if I'm pulling to the right and I'm not accelerating, there must be another force of equal magnitude the other way, and that equal magnitude must be the kinetic friction. And kinetic friction is a static value, which is purely equal to mu k f n. And this one is mu s f n. All right, and so because it's constant value, uh, uh, constant value for velocity, when we do our sigma equation, sigma fx, we can see how the applied force minus the friction force must equal zero. There's no acceleration, and the two things must equal each other. All right. Question, if we did not move at a constant velocity in the second part, could we have measured the coefficient of kinetic friction? Hmm. How can we modify this? experiment how do we modify this experiment so that we can figure out what mu k is if the block is accelerating all right so Emma says if the acceleration is known good so how do you do that if you have a stopwatch and a meter stick all right that is that is a good start how do we make that better that's low tech now how do we do high tech ah 
So as you'll find out next year, you can actually attach multiple things to your hub, because remember your hub has multiple ports. Um, so you can plug in multiple sensors at the same time and get data uh, from multiple sensors at the same time. Um, so to modify this, let's go ahead and keep our force sensor So here's our wooden block, it has a little ring. So in your design you have to have a little ring, otherwise you can't hook up your force sensor, right? But this ring has to have negligible mass in comparison to the block, so it doesn't uh, come into any factor besides being able to hook up the sensor. Alright, so here's our force sensor. Here's our hub. Here's our laptop with Logger Pro. Okay, so what we could do based on the design is that we could put our motion sensor, same thing we were talking about, the green thing. Uh, let's use green. Uh, and you can flip open the top, remember, and and turn it into like a boat. Uh, how do I do this? There we go. Ooh, this is this is not very good. There. This is turning into an art class. All right, um, and so we would strategically place it so that it's right here on the other side. Um, it'll send the sound, and then through Doppler shift, we'll, we'll be able to get our data. Uh, ah, there we go, connected to the hub. So now we're gonna get our acceleration data. Actually, it'll, the motion sensor um, motion sensor gives us x as a function of time and v as a function of time so it doesn't technically give us the acceleration however we can use the v uh, velocity graph take the slope or get the equation find the slope and that'll give us our acceleration And once we have this acceleration data, hopefully it's nice and constant, we'll do a linear fit. Uh, so your acceleration, especially when you do acceleration like this, it'll be like spiky and wavy. So it might look something like this. Uh, and we want a nice trend line that'll give us the average acceleration. Uh, and using that acceleration, we can figure out what our mu k is. So let's take a look at our new um, FP, uh, new sigma equation. Our FPD is the same. The normal force is up, the gravitational force is down, the applied force is to the right, and our kinetic friction is to the left. It's just uh, we're not going at a constant velocity. So sigma f. is equal to FA minus FFK is equal to mass times acceleration A. Then we do FA minus mu K FN is equal to MA, like so. Uh, from the Y equation, this is X, from the Y equation uh, we get, oops, we get FN is equal to MG. So applied force, which is straight from the probe, minus mu k mg is equal to ma. And so there you have it. Uh, the applied force from the from the sensor minus ma 
A measured from the motion sensor, F A measured from the force sensor, divided by M G gives you mu K. Would we have to manually accelerate the blocks at a constant rate, or is there some mechanism that can apply a constant force? Ah, good question. That leads us to our next type of problem. If I want to make sure that uh, my pulling is not, you know, not providing a constant acceleration. You know, technically, you can jerk your system, and your acceleration can change as a function of time. Right. Um, well, one way to do this would be to put it on a pulley system. Yay, pulleys! You just have to find an ideal pulley that has negligible mass and zero friction. Okay, now what we could do is attach the block like this, so block to pulley, and then attach the string to the force probe. And then attach the force probe to another block M2 that will provide a nice M2G down. Uh, this is like M3, but this will now incorporate the mass of the mass of the force sensor along with it. So that that could be one way. Or, uh, instead of using high-tech, you can go low-tech as well. Uh, if I just had the simple system without Logger Pro, uh, we can attach a spring scale. If we attach a spring scale here at this junction, kind of like putting an ammeter, right? We put an ammeter inside your circuit, the ammeter measures the current as it flows through. A spring scale inside your physical circuit here is going to measure the force as it goes through. Whoa, look, analogies are cool. And the spring scale will tell you how many newtons are pulling on uh, on the spring. And since it's an internal force, the internal force will cancel out, which means it does not accelerate the system. So how do we analyze this? Well, recall that we do two sets of equations. Um, the y equation, of course, is zero. So don't worry about that. We have applied force or tension, Ft. Uh, friction force FF so tension this is the X equation tension minus the kinetic friction is equal to mass 1 times acceleration and then for the other one you do uh, tension here assuming that it's an ideal pulley uh, the tensions are the same tension minus m2g and we'll make this negative because it's going downwards all right let's see if we can do some uh, AP style now uh, let's pull up some questions where is it I thought I had it 
Oh, here it is. Uh, there's a, uh, a simple ranking task. So here's a ramp. Pew. And, uh, and on this ramp, you have a bunch of carts attached to each other. So it's kind of like train carts. And there's three of them. Okay. This is tension one, tension two, tension three. Okay, and this one is two kgs. This one is one kg. This one is three kgs. Whoa. All right, rank tension one, two, and three. Uh, we only have 11 viewers today. That is terrible. Why are people sleeping in? It's 1045. Uh, if we had more, I would have done class flow, but since we only have a couple of people. In chat, go and type rank, tension 1, 2, and 3. Is there, a, is there another conference going on today? Like math teachers or something? Is that why it's so low? Mm. One, two, three. Bubble guy says one, two, three. Yeah, if you if you want to do FPDs on all of them, let's see. Let's do green for this one. Uh, recall that even though you're on a slant, let's see. Let's say the slant is angle. Ooh, angle theta okay uh, you draw mg straight down the normal force has to be perpendicular and we're doing it from the center of mass again because we know uh, the object isn't rotating um, this the normal force is nice and perpendicular and then to figure out the components I'm going to draw opposite to Fn parallel to the slope or parallel to the ramp. So I'll draw a dotted line opposite to Fn. And then I need a line that is parallel to the slant here. So parallel like this. Okay, and Mg is the hypotenuse. This is 90 degrees. Oops. Theta is the top one here. Theta. So this is mg cosine, no, sorry, so mg sine theta. And the one on the side here is mg cosine theta. Yeah. Or you could just remember how uh, the tension is based on what you're pulling. So person one, so imagine yourself instead now people holding on to dear life, holding on to their grades. Here's uh, person one. Holding on to person two. Ooh, we need to shape the one. Holding on to person three. Okay, so you can see how person one has to hold up uh, everything that is below it. Whereas person two only has to hold up everything below it, etc., etc., blah blah blah. Um, so bubble guy is correct. Um, tension one here is holding up the entire system, whereas tension two here is only holding up these two. And tension three is only holding up the last one. Correct. So tension one is the sum of all the mg one. Uh, I guess we can write tension one, assuming it's not accelerating, is m1 plus m2 plus m3. G sine theta. And then as you go down, you're just missing one of the masses. 
Okay, ranking task complete. Sure. So uh, you would, if it was on the AP test, you would justify this now. Uh, you can say conceptually, you can say how each piece of rope is holding up the masses that are below it. So then you can argue that way, or you can do an FPD and actually solve for all the tensions and then rank them. Uh, ah, here's a here's a very good dynamics question. So I feel like if there is any question that is you know a newer cutting edge question that could be on the AP test, it's these ones. It's, uh, they're they're very common in the AP Physics C test. Um, so it's and, and the trend is that more and more questions from the C test leaks into the AP One test. Okay, so here's a skateboard, and imagine having two boxes on the skateboard. Here's box number one, and here's a smaller box, box two. This one is, uh, let's make this one 10 kgs, and this one 20 kgs. Uh, the skateboard itself is negligible. Okay, so you can imagine the entire system being 30 kgs. All right, we're going to apply a force, but only to only to the top box. We'll call this force tension. We will apply a force to the top box only. And it appears that there's enough friction between all the surfaces to keep the system accelerating to the right. Use different colors. There's friction between the two boxes. We'll call this force between boxes, force B. And there's also friction between the lower box and uh, and the skateboard itself. Let's call this force S. So there's force T, force B, and force S. Um, and by pulling only the top block, uh, we are accelerating the the rope pulls on the top block, and the box both boxes and the cart accelerate together without slipping. So now go ahead and rank the tension force and the two friction forces between the boxes and the box and the skateboard. Ooh. Now this one is slightly harder. Okay, so for these types of problems, again, your strategy is to start with an FBD. If you're lost, do an FBD. Uh, so let's do two FBDs, uh, top box, and so we'll call this number one, number two. Yeah, so FBD number one, we have normal force up, we'll call this normal force number one up, M1G down, and the tension force is pulling us to the right. Hmm. Chat, is there another force? Maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> Well, uh, there's FB, so FB, what is FB doing? Uh, FB, if tension is to the right, then FB must be pulling box number one the other way. All right, so let's do FBD for the second block. Okay, there's M2G down, but there's also the weight of box one because it's on top of its head there's also the weight of box one pushing it down. Okay. And since F1, Fn1 is up, then Fn2, Fn1 is down for the second FBD. It's the normal force, it's a contact force. So notice how box one is being pushed by the surface of box two upwards. And Newton's third law kicks in and tells you that 
therefore the surface of box 1 must be pushing down onto box 2. Now from the skateboard there's a, a normal force upwards for box 2. We'll call this Fn2. Um, is there a tension force pulling box 2? The answer is no. <laughs> Either the delay is like 15 seconds or people are just are just done for today. <laughs> uh, there is no tension force in box 2. The tension force is only in box 1. However, there is a force to the right. Okay, notice how the friction force on box 1 is to the left. That means Newton's third law tells you that the friction force between box 1 and 2 must be the friction that is pulling it to the right. Um, there's also friction on, on the ground. Uh, so there must be FFS this way. All right. Cool. So with that in mind, go ahead and rank F, T, F, S, and F, B, and then leave the answer in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Oh, I always wanted to do that. See ya. <laughs>